Hello fellow space engineers, GopeScope here from the GopeScope Gaming Channel, and I'm happy to welcome you to another episode in our series, Let's Build a Battle Fleet. In this episode, we're going to look at two different types of drones. These two drones are uh, built, supported, launched, and piloted from the Dione class light carrier that we'll be covering in our very next episode. I initially was planning on having these and the carrier covered in the same episode, but I decided as the project became more complicated that it would make sense to do them in two separate episodes so we don't shortchange either one, trying to cram them both into the same episode. So to get started, let's take a look at this drone on the left. This is the Jednorozovi attack drone. It has two rocket launchers. These are not the automatically reloadable variant. They are the, I guess, manually reloadable variant. And if you're a player who is sitting about here, you can reload both of them and everything else in the cargo container. In this ship, everything else is the reactors. So you can fully re resupply this uh, from this position here. You can also see there's the camera that the uh, pilot who is safe aboard the carrier will be looking from. We have our maneuvering thrusters. This is a total of nine thrusters, four thrusters providing its, its main thrust, forward thrust, and then the other five are uh, maneuvering thrusters. Here's the antenna at the rear, the remote on top. And with that set up, along with the uh, three reactors that it has, it is able to achieve an acceleration of about nine seconds to get from zero to maximum speed, about nine seconds, zero to max, uh, which is I think 104 point something meters per second. Uh, it has a mass of about 4,000 kilograms. Now the combat drone, this was the Jednor Zovi attack drone. This is the Jednor Zovi combat drone. This one is approximately the same specifications, main difference being its armament a Gatling gun and a rocket launcher as opposed to two rocket launchers. Reloads in the same fashion from the front. And in this variant, this cargo container is also linked up through conveyors to this Gatling gun. So this can be uh, resupplied from the front here as well. Camera's in the same position. And if we circle around back, we have the same configuration with the antenna, the thrusters, and the remote control. This is a slightly lighter uh, ship, or a drone, compared to that one. So its, it's acceleration is slightly faster, but it's essentially the same. This one's, I think, something like 8.8 .8 seconds to get to max speed, whereas, whereas the attack drone is 9. So very close. Uh, another feature, you can see on the top here, we have one half on each of these, one half of a merge plot. Uh, we'll get into that more in the next episode with the carrier, because that has to do with how these are built. Um, but the, the general idea of these is that they are small, it's not a, a huge loss if one of them's destroyed. The resources involved in building them are pretty insignificant compared to, uh, certainly compared to a large ship, it's, it's still pretty insignificant compared to a piloted small ship, whether it's a bomber or a fighter. You can see it's, it's a very compact design. There's not a lot for a uh, power plant. You don't have a lot of uranium on the line. You don't have a lot of ammo on the line. Um, it's it's uh, kind of a bare bones, uh, efficient and maneuverable small craft. So it being small is its main defense. It's, it's really quick and it's tiny, so it's difficult to hit, difficult to shoot down. And if it is shot down, the carrier that they're launched from is capable of rebuilding them rapidly, so the pilot that's safe on that carrier can get another one right into the fight as soon as that uh, first one is lost, or almost as soon as it is. It'd take probably uh, just a matter of seconds to get another one launched and, uh, and away. So these would uh, would kind of swarm a target. Actually, we can see off in the distance there, that is the Dion class light carrier that is partially complete that we'll be covering next. And way off in the distance is a Tethys that's set up as an enemy, and we're going to be attacking him with uh, with some of these drones just to see how that goes. Uh, but these, these are able to chase a target and destroy things on it while the carrier is at a safe distance. And if the carrier is chased by the target or another ship, it's able to uh, run away and make an escape, uh, try not to engage while the drones do their work. Uh, the drones can focus on destroying an enemy's engines to uh, reduce its ability to chase the carrier, and then the drones can just kind of finish it off once it's a sitting duck. And we'll get into uh, the differences between these weapon systems, their strengths and weaknesses a little bit when we attack the ship. But uh, generally speaking, the attack drone is more like a bomber and the combat drone is a little bit more like a fighter. You can use both of them to attack a large ship. You could use both of them to try to attack a small ship. Um, I'd say the, the biggest difference is, um, obviously, you have two rockets coming out here, so you're going to do more damage. You'd be more likely to blow up a turret or something like that on a large ship than you would with this one. 
Uh, as far as this one goes, you have a little bit more in terms of endurance uh, with regard to your ammunition because you have the Gatling gun. Uh, these rockets only hold four, just like it looks. Each one only holds four rockets. So when you're done shooting those, you're out. And if your ship is still um, functioning at that point, you'd need to fly back to the carrier, reload quick, and get right back out. Um, or if time is of the essence and your resources are no object, you, you just abandon that one, build another one, and, and fly that one out instead. But with the Gatling gun, you have more ammo. So if you are chasing a, an agile fighter, or if you're using the combat drone more like a boarding drone, uh, you, you've got more options. You've got more uh, ammunition endurance, I guess. And if you're actually inside a large ship, which these are small enough to maneuver around inside a large ship, and we'll try to do that in this episode, um, you, you will definitely run into occasions where you don't want to use missiles. Just like Top Gun, I'm too close for missiles, I'm switching to guns, that applies here. There are definitely times where you're, you are going to be too close to want to fire a rocket if you're in some tight corridors inside a ship trying to uh, maybe hunt down and kill the crew or get into an area where you can blow up some critical things like uh, reactors and that kind of stuff. Uh, there are times where you want to use your, your Gatling gun and not your rocket launcher or you might blow yourself up. So now I'd like to take a look at uh, a group of these drones um, actually attacking the Tethys. Uh, actually, let's start with, as you can see here, we have a bunch of them lined up in front of the partially completed carrier. And we'll fly kind of one at a time um, to see what these, how these uh, perform uh, solo attacks. Now, in, in general, you're going to want to do kind of wave attacks with these, but here I'm just piloting one attack drone up against the Tethys. Uh, which is, is bringing anywhere between half a dozen to, to nine Gatling turrets to bear against this one drone on every attack. Um, so as I said, this is probably not the way you'd normally use these drones, but even with this many Gatling uh, turrets being fired at it at once, it's able to get some shots off and able to actually destroy some turrets uh, before being destroyed. You can see one turret was destroyed there. Um, uh, from my experience in testing this a number of times, it was a pretty good attack run to take out one turret, losing one drone. And and actually, I would say resources-wise, if you're attacking this ship and you lost one drone for every turret you destroyed, you'd, you'd definitely come out on top if you would salvage this vessel afterwards. So even in the solo attack kind of mode, uh, I found these to be fairly effective uh, in spite of the fact that you're losing them. Now here you can see... A demonstration of how durable, how robust these can be. That that ship just struck the Tethys at, at a pretty good clip and survived. And now I've destroyed enough turrets with the other uh, drones before this and destroyed this engine that uh, is where I'm, I'm flying into now is where an engine used to be. I'm actually able to get inside the ship. So this demonstrates another benefit of these vessels in that they can actually board a ship uh, once some damage has been done and then wreak havoc inside the vessel in a way that a larger, you know, uh, piloted vessel, uh, piloted ship can't do. I also noticed here, uh, this corridor, this turn, you should be able to make this turn. And in the, uh, the version of the drone that will be released as a blueprint, I will be reducing the length of it by one block, which will actually allow you to make this turn that I'm not able to make in the video right here. Just down that uh, hallway is the reactor room. So if you could make that turn, you could get in there and take out two of the reactors for this ship. Uh, so now we're seeing some more attack runs. Another example of the durability of these vessels. That, was, that wasn't editing, that was just what happened there. That was a pretty much full speed attack, uh, unleashing rockets. Struck something uh, that some of the armor on this that didn't, didn't actually destroy the, the, the important bits of the drone. It's still functioning, and as you saw there, I used rockets to destroy one of the reactors inside and then just blew up a door that leads out into the rest of the ship. And now we can see a number of attack runs. As you notice, there there's a fair number of drones that are flying with me. In these attack runs, those drones are essentially acting as decoys. I just have them on override thrust, uh, so it's, it's five or six of them flying with me. And even in this mode, where they're not being piloted and helping, you can see how well they split the fire uh, of the Tethys so that I'm able to more easily pinpoint and destroy turrets on the way through uh, with my, my single drone. There you see them flying overhead. So if those were all piloted, they'd be all the more effective then. You'd have, you'd have individual pilots all doing more maneuvering and doing more firing. You can see, you can imagine just how effective that would be. Um, I know some of my, my viewers were wanting to be involved in uh, doing some like gunning and, and all that, and I'd love to get an episode together where we do that so we can have more, uh, more pilots 
flying things. You can, <laughs> you can see sort of a comical collision here. Um, they actually managed to destroy two turrets. They just happened to be pointing in the right direction and struck the uh, the Tethys just right to knock out two turrets there. Um, but, uh, get, but to get back to uh, doing an episode where we have more pilots, I know there were at least a handful of people who had expressed an interest in that. So I'll be reaching out to you guys uh, to be involved in that, and maybe we can get some kind of a, a more exciting uh, episode together with more piloted action as opposed to, you know, a ship set to defend and me trying to to shoot at it because, you know, we can make it look kind of cool and I can show you what we're talking about, but uh, it's all the, all the neater to have some people actually piloting them. These will be available on the Steam Workshop along with the Dione class light carrier at the release of episode four, so the next episode. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to see more, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. As always, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for our next installment of Let's Build a Battlefield.